20 summer anime. Oh my god, I must be insane. So what's up guys, Fox in here. Summer anime season 2019. What did I think? What anime is cat girl crap and what's actually worth watching? So go ahead and give a boop stream goddess, power thumbs up and subscribe. Plus ring that bell. As something special, you're watching this because you're a huge fan of anime, which is why you know about the recent horrible tragedy that took place here recently for Kyoto Animation. I'm gonna be making this video dedicated to that cause. Any money this video gets will be donated entirely to Kyoto Animation. So, let's go ahead and get started. Kicking this off, Fire Force, brought to you by David Production. That's right, let's go ahead and Jojo the hell out of this anime. Fire Force, in a way, does feel like a prequel to Trigger's premier anime. You got a world where humans randomly gain these fire powers. They turn into these things called infernos that go insane and just blazing everything. It's then the job of this Fire Force not only to put out the fire, but more important, it put these infernos to rest. The Fire Force itself is made up of different teams that includes normal people, plus some other guys with actual fire controlling abilities. The shonen protagonist for this anime is Shinra. His mother and brother died years ago when his mother suddenly combusted. Unfortunately, the little guy was blamed for their death. Could there actually be more going on with this incident? Shinra in present day wants to be a top hero and save lives. Being from the third generation, his fire ability comes from his blazing feet. And yes, so far it does sound like your standard shonen setup. David Production so far is doing an amazing job with the fire visuals. But also, don't forget about the backgrounds. That includes the various religious imagery. Oh, and definitely don't forget about the fire cat girl too. Already worth watching just for her. That said, despite my praise, I do have some issues that I'll dive into with the dedicated video later. I do feel like Fire Force could actually be the next My Hero Academia. You got a top studio putting so much effort into this. Could you get Fire Force yearly? Next anime, Villain Saga. So hey, Berserk finally got that awesome anime adaptation. Oh wait. But seriously, Villain Saga being done by the Attack on Titan Wit Studio. I previously joked about being like that jealous ex, just looking over at just how much care the Wit Studio was putting into Villain Saga. But no joke about it, they're putting their all into this anime. But I'm getting ahead of myself, what is Villain Saga even about? You may have already guessed it, freaking Vikings. You got Papa Thors. This badass Papa used to be part of this infamous warrior group that used to kill and kill. Except a few years back, he actually faked his death to escape that life of bloodshed. Fast forward to present day, Thoros now has a family and a son. On top of that, this guy is the leader of this village that's in this very remote, snowy area. But too bad for him, unfortunately, even in this remote area, war has come to find him. Thoros is then not so subtly threatened to help fight alongside his ex-buddy. The second option is to just have his whole village slaughtered. Take your pick. The great part about this Villain Saga anime is the rich, detailed animation. You could tell the Wistood is putting more care into this compared to Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2. The story so far being set up gives me this very early Game of Thrones vibe. It also feels pretty obvious that a certain event from that season will happen for Villain Saga. Just waiting for that bomb to go off. Tick tock. So definitely check out Villain Saga. The first three episodes are meant to be watched together. I will have a dedicated video on this anime later. Summer anime number 3, Danmachi Season 2, brought to you by JC Staff. So you got Belle, aka the young Kirito, and the boopstring goddess returning, Hestia voiced by Rem. For Season 2, you finally got this villain character introduced, complete with some tongue action. In other words, you're getting a conflict that's not just this mindless monster from a dungeon. Danmachi Season 1 previously set up this great foundation for this fantasy adventure world. Unfortunately, Season 1 was a short season, which didn't allow it to do too much. Since then, there's actually been a spin-off series and even a Danmachi movie. But let me just be honest, seeing the movie here in Japan actually got me less excited for this sequel. And actually, with the star of Danmachi Season 2, it immediately reminds you that you should have rewatched Season 1. Looks like they're going with an Attack on Titan plan Season 2 four years later. Just watching the star of this did make me question, what exactly is the long-term goal? Does Bell only want to get stronger and eventually choose a harem member? This does get into the less enjoyable stuff for season 2. Seems like the dungeon stuff has been put on break. Now you're getting more of this familia drama stuff. It feels like I'm missing too much context from the light novels for me to really care much about this familia god issues. They also kicked the season off pushing that possible couple between Belle and that blonde. Which is literally one of the blandest, no personality character in this anime. Come on Belle, look at your other Hera members. As a positive, they have established this war game situation between the two families. The question is, is this going to be a short story or ultimately shift where the story goes forward? So far, I'm not too hyped, but I'm going to keep on watching. 
Summer anime number four, Dr. Stoned. And let me tell you, I freaking love the premise of this. One day, everyone on Earth got magically super stoned. Fast forward a few thousand years later, the main character Senku with his crazy shonen hair and his big buddy bust out. It's now time for them to science the crap out of this and hopefully return humanity back to normal. It does feel like a slow burn, but a steady pace with purpose. Each episode so far has been laying down key foundation pieces. So far, it does leave me wondering, what exactly is the long-term goal, especially with this being a shonen series? And I do mean a more realistic goal that the two main characters can accomplish in their lifetime. Was well, there going to be some type of villain figure, you know, besides the elements and wildlife? The answer to this is a Sparta of a human being, Shishio, humanity's strongest. All of a sudden, you have this battle what's being set up. Senku and his big buddy versus his god among men. So Senku wants to revive everyone. Meanwhile, Shishio sees the earth as finally recovered. Let's just revive the young people, no need for the old regime. I was really getting this Death Note slash Kogia vibe from this whole setup. On top of that, I really appreciate this guy not being one note. Clearly, he's going to be this long-term obstacle for the series. On a positive note, hey, new best girl got introduced in episode 3. Really curious to see what her role will be. Other than the obvious, oh, we gotta repopulate humanity. Also, please don't be a Sakura, please don't be a Sakura. Really looking forward to getting stoned weekly. Next anime, Tenjina Senpai. Oh my god, could it be? I actually found someone more useless than freaking Aqua. This anime focuses on this failure of a magician, Tenjina. One day, this poor sucker happens to stumble into her club by accident. After that, you see Tenjina just fail miserably trying to perform some so-called magic. I think a lot of this stuff is supposed to be funny, but it's really not. The only thing she actually succeeds in is some cheap fan service. And the girl is pretty clumsy. She's gotta show you those shots from down under. Just watching this, I was thinking this is the only reason this fella sticks around with this girl. Maybe, just maybe, he'll get lucky. But seriously, just being honest, I really wanted to drop this after how awful episode 1 was. The only bright spot here is this only being 10 minutes. And to be a little fair, it does move from god awful to tolerable in episode 2 and 3. But I'm gonna be stepping off this Denjina ride. Can you survive? Next anime, Isekai Cheat Magician. So you got this girl and guy combo being teleported into the Isekai part. So you got this overpowered guy using his magic to enhance his own body strength. He pretty much becomes the Isekai One Punch Man. The guy does lose points for looking like a Kirito clone. For the overpowered girl, which is voiced by Megumin's voice actress, she keeps to actually using magic as a mage. Then, for some weird reason, they decided to make the guy several times more overpowered than his female body. Why? As for the setting, typical isekai fantasy setup. You got the starting town, a guild, some quests, some rankings, and so on. If you've seen anime like Konosuba, Danmachi, Demon Lord, Shiro Hero, you already know everything. So time to be brutally honest. I was really looking forward to this isekai anime, and my god has it been a disappointment. It's not terrible, but it's just very in the middle. It feels like they're not even trying that much. I was hoping that at least this Megumin mage character would add some flavor, but unfortunately it seems that for whatever reason she really takes a backseat to the overpowered guy character. Honestly, the best part so far has been Myth and Roy doing the opening. Unfortunately, that's not enough to say if this isekai anime. I really don't expect this to be as bland as as wise man anime from the previous season, but I'll be really surprised if it does anything special. Still, I'll keep watching. Next anime up, the MILF Isekai anime. And no, Billy, I'm not explaining what a MILF is. But okay, okay, the actual name. Do you love your mom and her two-hit multi-target attacks? I welcome you the latest twist on the Isekai genre. Why not start your Isekai adventure, but also have your freaking mom tag along? I know, that sounds pretty lame. You now have this overpowered bland character plus his overpowered dual blade mama inside of this mama MMO. Who's the dual blade swordsman now? I was really just wondering, how soon are they gonna get to this instant stuff with the hot mama? That would be episode 2. Unfortunately for some of you, this mama fan service stuff is censored. And let me just mention, the brother and sister stuff like in Game of Thrones didn't ever really bother me. I mean, I know these two are just actors, not related. But then you get into stuff like this. Watching this unfold feels so freaking wrong. I don't know if it was weirder since his son clearly was not enjoying any part of this. Or actually, if he did enjoy it, it would be weird on a different level. Clearly, this anime is trying to sell this sexy mama not to her son, but to all of you watching. At least for me, that's not working. 
As for the story for this, is there any story? It's barely there. That would really just be the glue that gets his mother into weird situations with her son. Honestly, do any of you find his mama charming? How old is she by the way? And yes, despite all of that, I am gonna keep watching. I'm just not expecting much except for some mama cringe. Next anime up, Demon Lord Retry. Hey, remember that Rem girl? She's insanely popular. Yeah, just go ahead and copy that. I welcome you, the blonde Rem. Anyway, the actual setup for Demon Lord Retry is basically Demon Lord. You got this guy that's maxed out in this game, the game is set to shut down, then all of a sudden he finds himself as a maxed out character in this game world. You do get some bonus points for this Demon Lord character, nowhere looking like a Kirito clone. He's actually this 40 plus year old dude. Right away this guy stumbles into not Rem. And unfortunately this yellow Rem right here is not as gifted as the other two. But jokes aside, they go ahead and give you this sad backstory for blonde Rem. And yes, call me a sucker, it actually got to me. In fact, I wouldn't mind a shiny Rem figure. Anyway, you might be screaming, Hell Jerry, enough of all Rem. What the hell is the story here? And that's one of the issues, there's really not much going on here that's not the typical Isekai setup. You got the overpowered Demon Lord guy appearing and owning anything in his path. To give this Isekai some credit, it really doesn't take itself that seriously. And let me confirm, the overpowered Demon Lord guy is clearly collecting girls like Pokemon. But so far it's less going the harem route and more of the shield hero daughter route. That said, the story here is paper thin, episode 3 has been the worst so far. It made me realize that anything not involving Blonde Rem, I really didn't care for. But hey, if you like Isekai, overpowered characters, or even Rem, this anime may be for you. And yes, as a connoisseur of Isekai anime, I will keep watching. Next anime, Ari Fureta, also known as Isekai Summer Anime Number 4. The premise? You got not one, but a whole class being transported over. So these guys were summoned to help fight, and a bunch of other info drop in the first episode. What makes this anime stand out thankfully happens pretty quickly. You got these guys doing this dungeon raid, then all of a sudden something goes wrong. The main character is sent falling into the deeper depths of this monster infested ass pit. The fun then just keeps on coming. The guy gets his arm sliced off. Slowly as he's dying, he finally grows a pair. You actually see this guy have this Tokyo Ghoul moment. His whole hair and appearance changes after eating some raw monster meat. I do like that you actually see the guy struggling for a good amount of time to survive. And I know what you're thinking, the best comparison right now is obviously Shield Hero. The guy is now stuck on some unknown floor level, he's trying to get stronger to get revenge and get his ass out. Although a little later it seems like he doesn't really care too much about the revenge part. Oh yeah, and somewhere down in the dungeon he finds his very own blonde Loli. So hey, you lost an arm, but at least you got a free blonde vampire. As for some of the really bad stuff, you actually have the guy who tried to kill him admit his guilt out loud. I screamed, what the hell? Every now and then they also switch over to what's going on outside with the other students. To be honest, I really don't find myself giving a damn about that aspect. Then for the monster fights, really nothing too special and a fair amount of CG used. Anyway, despite my issues, ironically, Arifurita has been one of the more interesting Isekai summer anime. And no, that is definitely not a high bar. If you're craving an Isekai dish, why not give this a shot? Next summer anime, do you even lift, bro? So you got this story focusing on Sakura. She's gotten a bit pudgy recently. I'm sure we could all relate. Now it's time for her to hit up the ghost gym to get in shape. Along the way, you have some of her friends joining Sakura in this gym adventure. That's pretty much it. This really goes to show there's an anime for practically every concept. And if there isn't, one will get made. So yes, the story right here is super simple, and I'm actually freaking enjoying it so much. And it's actually one of my weekly motivations to hit up the gym this summertime. Throughout this anime, you got some fun characters coming in. This includes the anime version of The Rock working here. He's definitely a fun character. I originally expected this to be god awful or full of fan service. Turns out, neither. If anything, ladies may enjoy this more due to the huge amount of muscular anime guys. Oh, and definitely don't forget about the opening. By far the most catchy opening this summer anime season, easy. They even did an official live action version of the opening. How awesome was that? So yes, don't expect anything too mind blowing here, but if you are looking for some extra weekly motivation to work out, check out this anime. Next anime, Hensuki. And for me, I actually recall this anime due to Funimation promoting this at the Anime Expo party using some lovely undies. And honestly, I see most of you not liking this. So you got the main character trying to find his beloved Cinderella. Oh no no no. Not her slipper, but some goodies were dropped by this unknown lady. Now it's time to play Mr. Sherlock with this mystery. Which of the potential harem girls left him this gift from the gods? And yes, with that initial setup, this does scream fan service plus harem. 
What actually adds flavor to this anime is what the guy discovers after snooping around. The first girl he questions reveals herself to be a darkness type of character. She's into that kinky type of stuff. All she wants is to be his pet doggy. Then the second girl, the blonde Loli. Can you guess what makes her freaky? And really, just pause the video and try to guess. So, hopefully you post it down below. Turns out that this blonde girl wants a slave. And no, I'm not joking. You heard that right, a freaking slave. So, hmm, a blonde character that wants to own another person. This series is definitely gonna get cancelled in the US. And you might be seeing a theme here. You got this panty Cinderella mystery that serves as a way to move the story forward. Eventually, the last few minutes of the episodes reveals a girl's special quirk. That really is a problem. Anything up until the last few minutes is pretty dull. I'm only vaguely curious to guess the other girl's true nature. On the other hand, it feels like something I could just do on my own, then check the wiki instead. That said, if you are looking for something with more than simple fan service, this anime may be for you. Next anime, Skill 4 Teaser Tagaki Season 2. Oh yes, Forehead Chan is back. And I do mean the team up of Megumin and Eren's voice actors. What a great timeline to live in. So if you've already seen the first season, you definitely don't need my convincing. For newcomers to this anime, this is one of the better young romance series, really focusing on these two junior high kids. You got Nishikata who's constantly trying to one-up his crush. Unfortunately, he ends up failing miserably often. Mixed within this, you naturally have this little crush developing over time. So far, it does seem like season 2 is moving a lot quicker than the first anime season. Is the obvious plot point going to happen this season? If you are a fan of anime with these elements, definitely don't sleep on this anime. Next summer anime, Are You Lost? The title is actually a clever pun in Japanese. And to answer that question, yes, these four high school girls definitely are. You got all of them stranded on this island after their plane crashed. Really this castaway situation. In reality, three of them are completely useless. You're gonna watch this wondering, how are you not dead yet? What actually adds flavor to this anime is a blonde girl. Turns out she's actually an expert at being stranded out in the wild. And my god is she freaking hardcore. She really is the only realistic way that these girls could even survive. Going into this from the opening, I expected this to potentially focus more on the fan service part. So far, that hasn't been the case. As a positive, it does feel like I'm actually finding some useful survival advice. And really, just thinking about myself in the same situations, I would totally die too. Either way, let's just be real, there really is nothing groundbreaking here. Each episode is only 10 minutes long, so not a huge weekly investment. I'll definitely keep on watching. Next summer anime, Weathering With You, also known as Shinkai's follow-up to Kimi no Nawa. So I actually already did an in-depth but non-spoiler review diving into Shinkai's latest work. I'll just say, freaking gorgeous animation. Definitely my top 3 if not the top 1 for this year. If you really need any more convincing, I've already seen Weathering With You 3 times. If you at all enjoyed Kimi no Nawa, you're also gonna get some juicy references. There's even a freaking Konosuba cameo. That was a lovely surprise. In case you're not in Japan, I did hear about some screenings happening later this year. If you do get the chance to watch this in theater, definitely do so. I'm really just waiting for the debate to begin. Kimi no Nawa vs Weathering With You. Next summer anime, Senkoro Connect 2. For this, you got these high school students controlling these white monsters. They then battle some other kids with their own monsters. That doesn't sound familiar at all. I actually caught this anime movie last month here in Tokyo, only an hour and five minutes. Such a short runtime, so it must have been freaking amazing. Well, the music was good, when there was some. For whatever reason, a good majority of this movie actually goes without a soundtrack. On top of this, my theater going experience is actually a good indicator of how I felt. The girl to the left of me was trying not to fall asleep, then the big guy to the right of me was snoozing for a good chunk of it. And I know what you're wondering, did I fall asleep too? I would be lying if I said I didn't snooze out for a few minutes. Overall, it felt like a freaking waste of time. Definitely skip this. Next summer anime, Grand Belm. Did someone say Magical Girl Anime? Did I mention it's also by the ReZero director? Let me introduce you to this anime, which feels like Modoka meets Gundam. You got this grand magical battle royale taking place on Earth. You got these female pilots using moon magic and gems, which are used to summon these magical mechs to destroy one another. There could only be one victor. Thrown into this mix is this newcomer pink hair girl. She suddenly appeared onto the magical battlefield. However, she's not from a family that's a descendant of mages. What is her deal? A little bit later, the story here slowly dives into what magic really means for this anime world, which is often seen as a curse. 
You also gotta find out the motivation for these other Magic Girl pilots. Why exactly are they fighting in this magical battle? Some just want to do something with their lives. One of them wants to save their cursed sister. Another hopes to prove herself and her royal family line. Meanwhile, one of the main girls hopes to erase magic completely. As a huge positive, I really am appreciating the actual hand-drawn animation for the mechs, especially nowadays when like 99% of mech stuff is done in CG. This, plus their cuteness design, really reminds me of Darling in the Franks mechs. Keep in mind, this is an anime original series, which does mean it's more flexible with what the studio could do. Part of the series actually reminds me of Flip Flappers, which unfortunately also means no one is talking about this. I do hope this gem gets noticed, and is actually still worth watching by the finale. Next summer anime, Astra Lost in Space. She got eight high school students sent to this remote, uninhabited planet for a summer vacation trip. What in the world could possibly go wrong? As if the title isn't already a dead giveaway. You got all of these guys from different backgrounds sent to this planet. Shortly after landing, the real issue comes up. All of them are sucked up by this black device. They're then crapped out into the bone-chilling space. Thankfully, there just happens to conveniently be a spaceship nearby. Time to head back, screw this trip. Except hold up, turns out that these guys were dumped over 5,000 light years away from their home planet. They currently only have 3 days worth of food to survive. Oh, and it keeps on getting better. The communicator on board this ship got recently destroyed. In other words, one person among them wants them all dead. How does that sound? As a bonus, the first episode is actually double length, which really shows some strong confidence. So far, I think I'm actually enjoying the premise more than what's actually been given to me. So, you do have the background and issue of some of the various individuals being revealed. Most of them happen to have some sort of expertise that comes in handy. The group so far has encountered some struggles, but they mostly came out of any initial obstacle unharmed. Although, it still is early. I do question whether this anime will take a darker turn. I could really only see two men surviving at the end. I should also mention this potential red flag, which is really the unknown episode count combined with this anime being based on this ongoing manga series. There's a very good chance this will only be 12 episodes. In other words, how much of the actual mystery and space adventure will be covered in the anime? I highly doubt it'll get anywhere near a conclusion for the anime. By the way, for now, leaning towards a positive with the first impression. I will binge this anime later. Next summer anime, Maidens of the Savage Season. So I've been getting this recommended by a lot of you. The story here revolves around this all-female cast in this high school book club. Oh, the innocent girls here are just really starting to learn about what sex entails. All of a sudden, sex is all they could think about. They even come up with a bucket list with sexy time being at the very top. From here, you have some drama happening from pretty much all the girls freaking the hell out in their own way. A fun encounter is actually one of the girls catching her childhood friend at playing with this sausage. Then you could imagine the aftermath after that. First off, the good stuff. What did I like? I do appreciate an anime tackling young girls exploring this topic. There's so many stories focusing on the opposite from the guy's point of view. This is one of the reasons I do see any female in the audience enjoying this a lot. You know, some super relatable stuff. Then for the guys, a lot of the stuff here shown from the girl's point of view on this topic may actually be an eye-opener for you. As for some of the less enjoyable stuff, honestly for me, this anime really hasn't shown me anything I didn't already know. I also do watch a lot of Japanese dramas, which is why a lot of the drama stuff that happens in this anime actually reminds me of the stuff I've already seen done a lot. And then for the actual drama stuff, that stuff itself is in that borderline place, where an extra few minutes of talking potentially could have cleared up the situation. That said, finally by episode 3, let's just say that something happened that got me completely by surprise. And yes, for anyone watching this anime, I may be in the minority. But if you are in the previous cap mention, this anime may be for you. Next summer anime, Lord L. And yes, the funny part about this is that my dumbass forgot that this was a fate anime. I started watching this, then saw the dude with the multiple swords. Hmm, doesn't that guy look like that fate guy? Oh wait. So yes, fate fans go crazy. On the other hand, for someone like me, I know enough about fate to know that I don't got enough time for fate at the moment, which is why I won't be joining on this fate ride. As a positive from what I quickly caught, definitely loving the opening and soundtrack for this anime, Yuki Kajiura is back for fate. Summer anime number 20. If it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat a demon lord. Quite the title. She got another one of these lighter fantasy anime. You got magic, adventurers, demons, and all that jazz. This one actually focuses on the slice of life aspect. You got the top adventurer who happens to find this abandoned demon girl, Latina. Not to be confused with La Latina. All of a sudden, he becomes a super invested dad at just 18. 
Holy crap. The real main driving force for this anime is this little girl cute factor. And that's pretty much it. In other words, a lowly doing cute things. So far, I've seen a general positive response to this anime. Although, honestly, for me, I really got almost nothing from this anime. Yes, you do have a cute lowly, but pretty much everything else from the world to the sudden dead, it's severely lacking. The main character is actually getting more and more annoying by the episode. Really, his only defining trait is being this over-worried dad. I do wonder whether this will actually build into some other areas. For example, the opening hints at potentially the demon lowly joining the dad on the battlefield. There is also that topic about how the dad figure is constantly taking up jobs to hunt demons. Meanwhile, at the same time, he's raising a young one. Is this the type of anime to actually tackle that topic? So I'm going to circle back on this later and binge it. If you like cute lolis, this may be for you. Anyway, getting into my top 3 best and worst summer anime, top 3 for each. For the best, Vinland Saga, Fire Force, and Dr. Stone. Kind of obvious. Honorable mention to Weathering With You. For the worst, Hensuki, Isekai Cheat Magician, and Tenjina Senpai. Dishonorable mention to that Senkuro movie. As for what I'm going to be watching weekly, and definitely post your best and worst down below along with your weekly watch list. There's a top 3 I mentioned, Fire Force Villain Saga, Dr. Stone, the 4 Isekai anime, yes I'm a sucker for Isekai, Skilled Teaser Tagaki, the gym anime, Are You Lost, and Grand Belm. So what are your top best and worst summer animes so far? Definitely share your summer watch list down below. Everything else for me either I dropped or it's on hold for me. And yes, I will try to circle back and binge it so I get ready for my top 10 2019 anime list later. I'm hoping for some surprises. By the way, if you did enjoy the summer anime impressions, be sure to smash that thumbs up. If enough of you did like this, I'll try to keep making this type of video for every anime season. Maybe I'll even do a top short anime list after the season is over. Anyway, don't forget to post your own list down below, especially if you disagree with any anime I mentioned. I'm sure we don't agree 100%. Look forward to any dedicated video coming up. Check out my trailer's breakdown for SAO, My Hero Academia, and Konosuba. And I'll see you guys later.